Hi friends, welcome to this session on adjustments for outstanding expenses. In our previous video, we saw about the adjustment for closing stock while preparing final accounts. If you have not watched the video, I am giving you the link of the same in the description below. Please do watch the same to understand the concept of adjustment for closing stock. Please do subscribe this channel if you have not subscribed yet and also press the bell icon to get instant notifications. In today's video, we will be learning in detail about the adjustment for outstanding expenses. It is quite common for a business enterprise to have some unpaid expenses at the end of an accounting period in the normal course of business operations. For example, wages, salaries, rent, interest on loan, etc. So let us know what is an outstanding expense. Whenever an expense of an accounting period remains unpaid at the end of an accounting period, they are termed as outstanding expenses. As these expenses relate to the earning of revenue during the current accounting year, it is logical that they should be duly charged against the revenue for computation of the correct amount of profit or loss. Therefore, the resulting adjusting entry would be adjusting entry would be concerned expense account debit concerned expense account debit to outstanding expenses account this outstanding expenses account will be shown on the liability side of the balance sheet this amount will also be added to the total expenses under a particular head for the purpose of preparing trading and profit and loss account. Now let us have an illustration to understand this adjustment. Consider this trial balance to be the original trial balance before adjustment for outstanding expenses. So take a note of this. Now consider this trial balance. It has an additional information salary for the month of March to be paid rupees 10,000. So this salary for the month of March is due in the current financial year but it has not been paid in the current financial year. So this is an outstanding expense. Therefore the adjusting entry would be salary account debit rupees 10,000 to salary outstanding account rupees 10,000. Now the effect for this journal entry should be given to this original trial balance. So salary account you can see here it is rupees 60,000 it should be again debited with this rupees 10,000. As a result, salaries account here becomes rupees 70,000. And salary outstanding account is a new account which is created to account the outstanding expenses that is salary. Here we can see that account it is salary outstanding rupees 10,000. Now this is the trading and profit and loss account and this is the balance sheet after adjusting for the outstanding salary. As we earlier saw, the outstanding salary will be accounted as a liability in the balance sheet. So here we have accounted it salary outstanding rupees 10,000 and it will be added to the expenses in the trading and profit and loss account. So before this adjustment the salary is rupees 60,000 and after adjusting the outstanding salaries it has become rupees 70,000 that is rupees 10,000 has been added to this salaries account. By making this adjustment, we have accounted for the correct expenses in the trading account. Now when we pay this liability, we will be adjusting the payment against this liability account. We will be passing the journal entry salaries outstanding account debit to bank rupees 10,000 and we will not be once again debiting the expenses to the trading and profit and loss account. So let me repeat it once again. Whenever there is an outstanding expense, it needs to be shown as a liability in the balance sheet and it needs to be added to the relevant expenses in the trading and profit and loss account. Friends, I hope you have understood the adjustment for outstanding expenses. If you have any doubt, please do leave it as a comment below. Please show your support by subscribing to my channel. Also, press the bell icon to get instant notifications. Let's make accounting simple. 